Um, so we're talking about the inauguration. Yes, indeed, America is true. First, I think it's important that we inform you, so we're going to give you the schedule. So on Thursday, he's going to lay a wreath at the Arlington Cemetery to honor our veterans. Then he's having a concert at the Lincoln Memorial, but no acts have been announced. <laughs> they are scrambling right now. No to A-listers. See who would possibly? The Mormon. Well, the Mormon tabernacle. The Mormon tabernacle will be there. Not exactly an A-list poll. No, not an A-list poll at all. Um, then the inauguration will be Friday, the twentieth, on the west front of the U.S. Capitol. The ceremony yep. begins at nine thirty. Opening remarks at eleven thirty. The swearing-in by noon by Supreme Court Justice Chief Justice John Roberts Jr. Um, and the Mormon, the performance will be the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, and America Got Talent alum Jackie and Vicho, and Avencho, Avencho. I don't know who she is. I have never even heard of her. Um, has accepted the invitation to perform at Trump's swearing in, breaking with the tradition. <sighs> That's that unfortunate. Has... I mean, I guess it is fortunate because, like, what would be better than a reality star for president inviting another reality star to sing the? Uh, yeah, but he's, he's, she's the only one. And then moving on, Hillary Clinton, who lost to Trump, but all the presidents will be in attendance. Mm. Besides, Unfortunate for Hillary that she has to go sit, watch Donald. Yeah, besides oh. H.W., who is sick. Then there'll be an inaugural parade. Um, and a court, a court, I'm just reading it to you like it is. Um, the inaugural parade will be 34 local and six national groups to participate, according to roll call, despite the protests by some alum, alumni of Tougaloo uh, University. Um, they'll, be, they'll be there. The New York-based Rockettes have also been slated to perform during said inauguration, even though not all the people will perform. Many should be closed, blah, blah, blah. And then he has the inaugural ball. He's only doing one ball. Inaugural balls, excuse me. They'll all be, they'll be at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center and the National Building Museum. At least three official inaugural balls are planned. They'll feature dancing, entertainment, and appearances by Trump and his wife Melania. The two main balls will be held at the Walter E. Washington um, Convention Center. And the salute to our armed forces will be at the National Building Museum. There are also several unofficial balls on that night. Land, uh, landmarks, they have the Big Apple Ball. Um, they'll also have the Peace Ball, which would be for the non-Trump people. And that will be at right. the African American Cultural History Museum, Smithsonian. It will be hosted by our friend Andy Shalal, um, yep. the owner of Busboy and Poets, a big restaurant here in Washington. So those, that's, what you, that's, what, that's what you need to know. What do you think? Uh, what do I think about Donald Trump's inauguration? Yeah. Uh, I will not be attending any of it, personally. Um, I will be holed up in my home, uh, which I think is a better use of my time than attending any of the so Donald gonna, Trump you, So here's events. a question. Are you going to watch? The inauguration? He's going to watch. No, I don't think I will. I, uh, I don't know. I Unfortunately, mean, okay. will be there. I will be there. Um, which is uh, too bad for you, because I can tell you this. It's being, the at the, worst. being at the inauguration four years ago, you wake up at 3 a.m. Um, it's usually freezing. This year it's 54 degrees. You don't know that. Yeah, that's what the forecast says. A high 54, a low yeah, of 43. But you, the weather for a week from now is never accurate. Fair, weather, but people if don't it even stays know. between 43, I mean, four years ago, y'all, it was 25 degrees outside. I'm just saying, Richard, prepare for the worst. I am. I have a new coat. Richard has a new coat, so you can watch him on TV with his new coat on. It's, it's sleek. It's a now, bad man pajama. Richard, what are your takes on the slew of protests that are going to be there, going on? There's going to the be district? there's going to be a lot of protests. So I feel like more people are coming into DC to protest than to the, come to the inauguration. I, I think that's about right. So according to Mariel Bowser and her team. Um, they are prepared for any and all circumstances, as well as for people to visit the city and exercise their First Amendment right. Many groups have applied for permits to do so through uh, the U.S. Park Police and the Metropolitan Police Department. The Park Service has received at least 23 permits for groups seeking to demonstrate in favor of and against Trump, the New York Times reported. The Metropolitan Police granted three permits for Freedom Plaza demonstration. The director of Homeland Security and the Emergency Management Agency said uh, in a January 6th briefing, he said the following. We expect people to comply with their permits. We expect them to exercise their rights peacefully and we'll be prepared should that, sh that, that doesn't happen. Um, there's going to be some protest. Yeah, I mean, we've really never seen anything like this um, in, yeah. and in, in the inauguration. There's going to be 4,200 4, free joints hung, uh, handed out. That 4,000... 
Where do you see this? 4,200 Oh, minutes. like 420. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> You're slow. <laughs> and the whole idea is, is they want, they're going to toke up right at, I think it's 1120. They have a time that they're going to toke up. Um, and they want, basically, they want everybody to toke up at the same time so the entire mall can smell like weed. Um, that's what, I mean, that's what they want to do. So we have the inauguration coming up. Um, one can only hope, I mean, that even though whether you agree with Donald Trump and his philosophies and values or not, that we do have a peaceful trans transfer of power. I mean, unfortunately, you know, you get what you get. But, um, you know, part of being an American is you have your elections and you live with the consequences, right? Yeah, you do. Yeah. And the other maniac of, of the week, so we have four, five, we're finally at four, is um, yeah. Rex Tillerson obviously, um, the pick for Secretary of State. So he was heard this week. Um, join, there was, uh, so there was a lot of protests against Rex as well. Yeah. Um, there were 15... All the climate people are really, really against him. No, they hate him. They just hate him. Because they think ExxonMobil is the reason why the climate sucks right now. Which um, is true. Which is sort of true. Um, so they had 15 T-Rex dinosaurs and more than 200 people march through the U.S. Capitol and rallied outside the Dirksen building to demonstrate mass... Public, public opposition to the appointment of the recently, for, uh, well, the recently former CEO of Mo Exxon Mobil, Rex Tillerson, as Secretary of State, urging senators to hashtag reject Rex. Um, and one person said, this is a statement from the executive director of 350.org, we won't allow our climate diplomacy to be in the hands of a dinosaur like Rex Tillerson. Mm. And she goes on to say, by tapping Rex Tillerson as Secretary of State, Donald Trump essentially declaring war on our planet and betting against a livable future. Tillerson would undoubtedly prioritize Exxon and its ilk above the well-being of the American people. Yeah, I would call that conflict of interest. I don't know, did you see any of the of the hearing? Because John, Don, or, uh, John McCain was was laying into him. Oh, yeah. So here's the or, funny part John about... McCain hates Russia. I don't know if you know this. John, John McCain, McCain hates Russia. Hates everybody besides <laughs> Lindsey Graham. Yeah. Like, and Lindsey Graham and John McCain are going to be the... They're going to be, uh, like, uh, the traveling anti-Trump road show yeah. for the next four years. Yeah. They're going to be like, whatever Trump says, we say no. Yeah. We say no. So Donald Trump... I mean, uh, John McCain gave... And he's not the only one. The I mean... Even Marco Rubio was yeah. going in. Well, I on, think this is all part of a, a Marco Rubio long-term strategy. So let's talk about that viability. for just a minute. I know we're, we're, we're done. We're, we have to go to break. I really want to talk. We'll talk about it next week. Marco we're, Rubio and the Ted Phoenix Cruz rising from the ashes. What do they do now?